Today we're going to be talking about how to find magnitude and angle of a resultant force. And in this particular problem, we've been given two forces, we'll call them force one or F sub one and F sub two. Our first one, which we'll call F sub one, is a force of 200 newtons acting in this direction. We can just think of this as a vector with a magnitude of 200. And we know that the angle between this vector, or this force here, and the positive direction of the x-axis is 60 degrees. Then we have this other force, which we'll call F sub 2, acting in the negative direction of the x-axis with a magnitude of 300 newtons. If you imagine that these two forces are pulling against each other, what we want to do is find a resulting force of these two forces and the angle between that resulting force and the x-axis. So what we mean by that is here you can imagine we have this force of 300 newtons in this direction and this force of 200 newtons in this direction. So there's slightly more force being put in the direction of this green arrow here than this orange arrow. So if we just were to take a guess right now and look at where our resultant force might be, it's going to be somewhere between these two forces. We're putting more force on this green arrow here. So our resultant force is probably somewhere about here maybe, and this is rough, but it's gonna be slightly closer to this 300 Newton force than this 200 Newton force because there's more force in this direction. So our resultant force will be somewhere around here. We wanna know the magnitude of that force, in other words, the length of the vector, and also the angle that's created between this resultant force and the positive direction of the x-axis. So the first thing that we need to do in order to figure out those two things, we need to model F sub one and F sub two, these two forces, as vectors. Let's deal first with F sub one, our first force here. What we need to remember is that by the definition of vector addition or the triangle law, this force here of 200 newtons, this vector, can be modeled by two separate vectors. One that has the x coordinate that contains the x component here and goes from the origin to this terminal point right underneath our terminal point of this 200 Newton force. And then the second vector which starts from this terminal point and goes up to the terminal point of our original vector. So we can model this original vector of 200 Newtons by adding together these two vectors here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say that F sub one is equal to the magnitude of our original force here, which is gonna be 200 Newtons. So we say the magnitude, we multiply that by cosine of 60 degrees because we're looking again for the X value, the length of this side here. We want cosine of 60 degrees like this, and then we're going to be multiplying that by I because remember I corresponds to our X component. That takes care of this first blue vector here, this horizontal one. Then we're going to add to that this vertical blue vector, which is going to get us when we add these two together, our original vector here, F sub one. So when we do that, we're again going to say the magnitude of 200. This time we're going to multiply by sine of 60 degrees, sine of 60 degrees. That's going to give us the Y component, the vertical component. And we're going to be multiplying that by J, which corresponds to our Y component. Now, if we look quickly here at our unit circle, essentially what we have here is a vector in the direction of 60 degrees. Well, 60 degrees on our unit circle is in this direction right here, 60 degrees, out to pi over three. And what we know is that the x value there, if we go here along the x value, we've got our x value and our y value here, it's given by this coordinate point right here. The x value is 1 half, the y value is root 3 over 2. So what we can say then is that our cosine of 60 degrees value, our x value, is 1 half. So we'll get 200 times 1 half, the x value of the coordinate point from our unit circle, plus 200 times sine of 60 degrees, the y value from our coordinate point on the unit circle, which is root 3 over two, and we're gonna multiply that by j. When we simplify, we see that we get 100i plus 200, and the two are gonna to cancel to be 100. We're gonna get 100 root three times j. 
Now we have this in the form of a vector. This is also equal to, we can put it in this vector form here, 100 comma 100 root three, like this. Now if we write out here force two, we'll say F sub two is gonna be equal to, again we do magnitude, which in this case is 300 for this other vector, 300 times, again we want our X component, so we're gonna say cosine, which gives us X, of 180 degrees because this was 60 degrees here but coming from the x-axis and moving all the way over here to this green vector is 180 degrees so we'll say cosine of 180 times i plus 300 times sine of 180 times j now when we simplify this again we can use our unit circle we know that, according to our unit circle, cosine of 180, or the x value of the coordinate point at 180 degrees, is negative 1. So we'll get 300 times negative 1i plus 300 times the sine value at 180 degrees, that's the y value at 180 degrees, which is equal to 0, and we multiply by j. When we simplify, we just get negative 300 I and this J component goes away completely and this should make sense to us because since we only have I left over here this tells us and because the uh, value here at 300 is negative it tells us that we're moving in the negative direction right along the x-axis that there's no vertical component where we go up along the y-axis or down along the y-axis because there's no J component involved so we have just negative 300 I this translates to vector notation of negative 300 comma zero like this. Now when it comes to finding an expression for the resultant force, we'll call the resultant force F sub R, the resultant force, all we need to do is add these two together. So what we'll do is we'll take this notation here and this notation here and add them together. We'll get 100 I plus 100 root three times J plus a negative 300i or just minus 300i. When we simplify, we'll see that our resultant force is gonna be equal to negative 200i plus 100 root three j, and we can also write that notation as negative 200 comma 100 root three in vector notation that way. So there's an expression for our resultant force now we need to find the magnitude and the angle of the resultant force. Remember that magnitude is really just the length of the vector. Well, when we have vector notation like this, we can use the distance formula to find the length of this vector. Remember that this vector notation basically tells us that we start at the origin, the point zero, zero, and we go out to the coordinate point negative 200, 100 root three. So our distance formula, we can say distance of the resultant force or length of the resultant force vector is gonna be equal to square root of, we take our x value here, negative 200, and we subtract zero because the initial point of this resultant force vector is the origin right here, remember where, where we started it? It's gonna end at the terminal point here, negative 200 comma 100 root three, like this. So we say negative 200 minus zero because this point here Zero, 0, so we're using the distance formula to find the distance between these two points here. So negative 200 minus 0 squared plus 100 root 3 minus 0 squared, like this. Now when we simplify to get the length of the vector, you can see we'll get negative 200 minus 0 is negative 200, square it, and we get 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 40,000. Then we get 100 root 3 minus 0 is 100 root 3. When we square it, we get plus 100 and two extra zeros, 10,000 times 3 is going to give us equals 40,000 plus 30,000, which is going to be root 70,000 like this. If we convert this to the square root of 10,000 times seven, we can take the square root of 10,000, we'll get 100, and we'll see that the length of our resultant force vector is 100 square root seven. If we do that on our calculators, we see that that's approximately equal to 264.6, so we'll say 
0.6. Again, this is the magnitude or the length of the vector. And because the magnitudes we were given are in newtons, we're going to say that this is 264.6 newtons is the magnitude of our resultant force. Now we just need to deal with the angle between the resultant force and the positive direction of the x-axis. So that's this angle right here, positive direction of the x-axis to our resultant force. What is that angle right there? We already know the magnitude, we need the angle. Well, here's what we do know. We know this angle right here. We know this angle, we'll call this angle theta right here. We know it because we know that this coordinate point is negative 200, 100 root three. So if we just draw a triangle right here that goes out to the terminal point of this vector, and we call this a right angle 90 degrees, then this angle theta can be found with this formula where we say tangent of theta. Remember that tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Well, opposite side, this side here, we know that this triangle here has a height of 100 root three because that's our y coordinate. This is 100 root three. We also know that the length of the adjacent side here is 200 because this coordinate point here is negative 200, the x value. So the length of that side is 200. So if we say tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, 100 root three over 200, we can say that tangent of theta is equal to root three over two. If we solve that for theta, we get theta is equal to arctan, or the inverse tangent function, of root 3 over 2. So this is helpful because that gives us this angle here, right? This pink angle here. But what we really need is this angle here in purple. Well, all that we have to do now is say that this full angle here from the x-axis, the positive direction of the x-axis, all the way over here is pi. Remember, according to our unit circle, half of a circle here is pi, or 180 degrees. So we can express this purple angle as pi, the entire half circle, minus this small piece here. So we'll call this angle that we want of the resultant force, we'll call it theta sub r, just like we had d sub r. So we'll say theta sub r is going to be equal to pi minus arctan, or the inverse tangent function, of root 3 over 2. If we calculate that using our calculator, what we see is that theta sub r, the angle between the positive direction of the x-axis and our resultant force, is approximately equal to 139.1 degrees. That's the purple angle that we were looking to find between the positive direction of the x-axis and our resultant force.